So MRCP card, we will focus uh, more and more on the physics, the protocol, the patient preparation, what all sequences we have to take. And uh, maybe in some upcoming session in the next month or so, we can take a good class on pathology where we will be uh, covering the entire spectrum from the hepatobiliary to the pancreatic pathologies. So this class will be a very concept building class. Okay? So just sit back, relax and try to absorb as much as you can. Okay, so we'll be discussing the introduction, principle, protocol, anatomy, some important variants and the indications. Okay, so this is a primary tool for evaluation of biliary obstruction. And uh, the physics part is that wherever there will be fluid, the fluid is going to appear as hyper intense, right? So intrinsic contrast media, the fluid which is present in the hepatobiliary and the pancreatic system, that will act as an intrinsic contrast media. So you don't have to administer contrast most of the times unless and until you are doing something like a uh, functional MRCP. So this intrinsic contrast media is a fluid in hepatobiliary system. Uh, heavily T2 weighted sequences we have to use. The fluid filled structures in abdomen, they have a long T2 relaxation time. So therefore the T2 weighted sequences as compared to surrounding soft tissue. And apart from that, you further apply fat suppression so that the background gets subtracted and all you see is the ductal anatomy in great detail and with great precision. So that is in short about uh, introduction. Right. Principle and technique map that MRCP is uh, very motion susceptible because it is a very, I would say, a very delicate kind of a study where you have to look at very fine ducts, the second order branches, sometimes third order branches. You want to visualize very fine structures. So you have to do a detailed imaging. And whenever you want a very high resolution, you need time also for high resolution, high SNR quality images, right? So time is image. If you have ample amount of time, the patient is cooperative, breath hold kar para hai, yeah, you're using a respiratory triggered uh, system, then you will get very good images of very beautiful diagnostic quality. So this is the reason that we have to uh, make the most of the time because most of the time uh, the patients are not very cooperative. So ECD we use sequences which are ultra fast sequences in less amount of time with lesser breath hold, we can get more and more information and less of motion artifacts. So the basic punchline will be that time is image. Okay, time if it is a very long sequence, so image quality will deteriorate. So you have to take a sequence which will give maximum detail in less amount of time. This is the reason apart from heavily T2 weighted, the second aspect is ultra fast. So one is that they are heavily T2 weighted like Hayes and FRFSC. The second thing is that they're ultra fast sequences, fast and ultra fast, like your turbo spin and all of those. So now there are three things in totality. One is that it is a, a free breathing. The patient is not at all asked to hold their breath. That is one possibility, free breathing technique, which usually is not possible in MRCP, except for one sequence, which I will tell you when I'm discussing the protocol. Because the other day we had a small kid, four-year-old kid who was having recurrent episodes of pancreatitis. And of course, a child cannot stay, a four-year-old cannot stay still in the MR scanner for half an hour. So the patient had to be sedated and a sedated patient is not going to hold breath for you. So most of the sequences were suboptimal, but there is one sequence in the MRCP protocol, which is like a free breathing technique. It's so quick that even if the patient is not holding the breath, even that you can acquire that one sequence. Okay. So that is a free breathing. The second is breath hold. Up uh, breath hold me kya rahega? single shot that we say that just hold your breath for 10, 15, maximum jitna stretch kar paega, 10 to 15 seconds. That is a single shot approach. Okay. And then non breath hold sequence. This is the most advanced because in this hardly for three to four seconds, the patient has to just hold a little bit and you acquire the sequence. This is done with the help of respiratory triggering. So we'll come to that. Technical factors may 1.5T versus 3T. So, of course, 3 Tesla is going to give you higher resolution, signal to noise, but it is also going to come with more of artifacts such as susceptibility artifacts. Okay. So, even you can get good quality in 1.5T, but if you have a 3T, 
that's even better. Now, what we require is ideally at least four hours of fasting is required. Why? Because it will reduce the fluid secretions within the stomach and duodenum. So that is number one. Because we want to suppress all other secretions except for bile in the gallbladder, cystic duct and all the biliary ducts and also the fluid in the pancreatic duct. Apart from that, whatever fluid in the stomach, in the duodenum, in the small bowel, large bowel, everything I want to be subtracted. So four hours of fasting will uh, decrease these secretions in the gastric and duodenum. It will also reduce the bowel peristalsis. So that will decrease the motion artifact and it will promote gallbladder distension. So you have three benefits of this. Now, buscopan is optional. If you want to give an antiperistaltic, you can give buscopan like an IV 10 mg or a 28 mg shot of buscopan. That's optional completely. And this thing also, some centers, they give further, they go on one step to give a negative oral contrast. So right now I'm working at Ames Bhopal. Right now they do not give in the current protocol. They do not administer this negative oral contrast. Some other centers they do give. So what they do is you have your gadolinium. So gadolinium, it's very costly, especially if you're working in a government setup. So everything is done according to the inventory, right? Vials may what happens, some few 0.5 ml, 1 ml of gadolinium is left over in the vials. So they use that diluted further with NS and that can be used as a negative contrast or something like an iron oxide, uh, blueberry juice, pineapple juice. There is a Dextra Orange, which comes with a brand name Dextra Orange. Some people even have vanilla ice cream. So anything which will have like iron or manganese or gadolinium in that, that may act as a negative oral contrast to further suppress all other background uh, GIT secretions. Okay. Okay, then we use a phased array body coil for this. Acquisition is like you do for abdomen. So feet first. For brain, we have head first. Here you will have feet first. Respiratory band is applied. If you are having respiratory triggered sequences, okay? So there is a respiratory band. I have an image in that. I'll show you what does that mean. It is applied almost at the level of the ziphy sternum. With that, it will note the movement of your anterior abdomen, how it is moving with every respiration. And like a graph, you will have a complete monitoring that is respiratory triggered sequences. And then a 2D breath hold hay sequence, which is a heavily titubated and also a fast sequence. So this is what I was talking about. So this thing it is showing us, this is our phased array coil, a phased array coil. Now in this diagram, if you see, patients ke upper abdomen mein, this black color ka band like thing is tied. This is called as your band, respiratory band. Hai, jiski madad se we will do the respiratory triggering or the respiratory gating. And this is how you get a complete graph where you can see where is the inspiration, where is the expiration. Here, for example, you have to take your sequence. So at this point, you will say, ke chalo, hold your breath. And hardly for three to five seconds, for a very short amount of time, the patient will hold their breath and you will acquire your sequence. So this is a very precise way. Less of motion artifacts will be there. This is the respiratory triggered method. Most of the MRCP sequences are done with respiratory triggering. So they are very motion sensitive. Now, heavily titrated sequence, depending on the vendors and the kind of system you're working, if it's GE or Siemens, it can differ. So I have all the names you might have heard. Different people will have different uh, these things. Rare is rapid acquisition and relaxation enhancement. FRFSC is a fast recovery, fast spin eco sequence, which is it's me up up na, the work horse sequence of MRCP is the coronal oblique 3D with respiratory triggering. So this is your FRFSC. Heavily titubated and a very fast sequence. It is a kind of spin eco sequence, FRFSC. Then there is haste, which is half four year acquisition, single shot turbo spin eco. And it's a single breath hold less than 20 seconds is required. And further you go on to have fat suppression also to attenuate all the background tissues and the fat. If you want to look at the duct wall, you can go with a fat suppress and a T1 GRE sequence, a gradient eco. T1 is also, we take one.